So I heard a story not too long ago of this father of a little one-year-old. They were out camping and he decides that he wants to go for a hike and he's going to take his son with him so he can have some father-son bonding time. He puts his son in, on his back, in his backpack, the little harness thing, instead of being on his chest, it's on his back. And he's heading a mile into the woods, thick canopy. It almost becomes like, a, uh, like an eerie darkness. Yeah, that's how thick it is. He hears thunder rolling off in the distance and he says, uh, he says to himself, oh man, it's, it's, it's gonna start raining soon. I have my son, I'm not alone, so I have to be a little bit more cautious. We gotta head back. So he decides that he's gonna head back only until he uh, finishes up this little loop that he, this little loop that he's on. And right before he finishes up that loop, the lightning starts to flash and he can, he can see it through the canopy above him. The wind starts to wrestle or rustle the, the leaves and the branches of the trees. And so now he's starting to get kind of, kind of worried. You know, he has his son, his, his, his baby with him on his back. He didn't know that it was going to storm. So he starts to head back and his son starts to pick up the nervous energy that he's putting out. He's not saying anything because he's by himself. He doesn't have his wife with him. He's not, he doesn't have his friend with him to have a conversation. It's just him and his son and the silence and the, the, and nature. The wind gets so bad that it makes that that really loud like a, like a train sound when it goes through all the branches and the leaves. His son starts to cry. It starts to rain. His son starts to cry louder and now it becomes a, a scream, a blood curdling scream. The father kneels down and, and he, uh, he slowly unlatches some of the, the straps and he pulls his son around him and he puts his son in his bread basket in his arms and he's uh, he puts his hoodie over him he takes his jacket off of himself and he puts it around his son over his son so that his son doesn't doesn't get wet but the screams that his son was was emitting it was it was uh, It was a terrible blessing, a terrible situation, but a blessing simultaneously. He thinks to himself, wow, you know, this is, this is what it's like to truly be the protector, to be the provider to somebody who can't protect themselves, who cannot provide for themselves who is absolutely terrified right now nothing in the world matters nothing his reality the father is that he gets to be the provider the protector awesome feeling his son on the other hand his reality is the storm the storm nothing in the world matters the storm is all that matters all of it the thunder the lightning the wind that's his reality there's no yesterday there's no tomorrow there's the right now and he is absolutely terrified his father still kneeling down, has his jacket over him to protect him from the rain. He's whispering to him, I love you, buddy. You'll be okay. I got you. I'll protect you. I'm here for you, buddy. I love you. I love you. I'm going to protect you. You're going to be okay. The words, just words, the tone, powerful. But if you've ever been in a storm, no matter what, 
somebody says, what, what words of advice they have. We always know better, don't we? You don't know my storm. You don't know my reality. You don't know how tough the things are that I'm, that I'm enduring. You have no idea. You'll say to them, the honest ones will say, I, I, I actually don't. I, I really don't know what you're going through, but I'm not not going to walk away from you because I have never experienced that that you're going through. I love you enough to still be here and I respect you enough to tell you that I don't know what you're going through, but that doesn't mean that I don't know what it means or what it feels like to have uh, suffered. And you have the others that be like, Oh man, I know exactly what you're going through. Child, please. Mm -mm. Those who are in that storm, they see through the bullshit. Excuse my language, but that's basically, that, that's no other word for it. If there's a better word for it, shenanigans. I'm trying to stop using shenanigans. I'm, I'm weaning myself off of shenanigans. And that's like weaning yourself off of, of uh, people that are in your lives that are always you know, trying to give you the words of affirmation and stuff, but not living it themselves. The baby's reality was the storm. The panic, the, the traumatic event that he's in. The reality of the father was that he knows that all it is is a thunderstorm. We get thunderstorms all the time. Just as long as we keep moving, we don't stay still, we maintain you know, a healthy temperature, maintain hydration, nourishment, and shelter. Just the basics, we're gonna be okay. Even if it's a horrible storm, chances are we're gonna be okay. But my son, on the other hand, doesn't feel that way. Imagine, when I heard that story, I was thinking of uh, Hurricane Irma. Hurricane Irma that came through Florida, and that's, I mean, it was uh, September 11th of uh, 2018, or yeah, 2017, excuse me. And it was, it was, whew, it was tough, but for a very, very short duration. And all the panic and all, and, and but the thing is, is that you have people that were actually getting hurt some people were losing their lives and their basic necessities of shelter, protection, nourishment, you know, all that stuff, they lost it. Knowing all of that, you have the weatherman that's in some, you know, weather station in Texas and it's bright and sunny. It is a beach day. It is a beautiful day. The temperature, 75 degrees at noon low humidity no clouds in the sky and the sky is a baby blue and they look at that radar and they see this monstrous storm and and they uh and they can see how fast it's going to the west and the circulation of, of the clouds and of the formation and stuff and where the most wind is going to be and where the most rain is gonna be. And he says, those of you who are in this area, it might seem bad right now, but you're going to be okay. With certainty, I know you're gonna be okay. Those of you who are in this area, things are gonna be a little bit tough you might, you might be scared. I know you are. And, you know, the, the, the roof might be shaken. The trees are all bent over. But you're going to be okay. The reality was us in that storm. And all we have is the wind and the, the trauma. It's, it's, it sucks. It's like nothing in the world mat Like the baby. Nothing in the world matters in time and space. Not yesterday. Not the stuff that I've that I've done in the past, the mistakes I've made, the people I've hurt, the people I let down, the things that I let go to shit, the, the things that I've, I've procrastinated and the opportunities I lost because of it, the addictions, the, the fights, the, 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 
the muck, none of it matters right now because I'm in the storm now. I don't care about tomorrow. I don't care about getting that promotion. I don't care about, I don't care about anything. Nothing matters but now. But the weatherman knows, ah, man, it's, it's, it's a season. It's a, it's a very, very short season. And that season can last five minutes. It can last five hours. It can last five days, weeks, months, five years. It's just a season. So he says to himself, I got that, I got it. But I have to reassure people that are in the storm that they will make it out. Maybe it's like, uh, maybe it's like Pixonic telling us like, shit's kind of hairy right now. I know it, we know that you know it, matchmaking all blah, shock trains and upgrade times and boosters and MK2, all that stuff. I know, I know, I know, I know. Trying some things out, but we have to gather data. You have to stick in there. You have to keep fighting. You keep fighting, your character will show up you stop fighting, your character will show up. Any changes in life, it's like the fine tune theory. Uh, I heard it put like how God has created us, Earth, the solar system, everything to be 100% balanced. And if any of those numbers, the distances, the, the measurements, the, the dosages, the we wouldn't be alive. Like if there was like a specific amount of salt in the ocean, if there was more salt, we would, would not have life. If there was less salt, we wouldn't have life or, or gravity or the distances between us and the moon and the moon to the, the sun and the way that the moon rotates on its axis to keep us at a, a slight tilt. If it was a little bit more of a tilt this way, no life on earth because most of, most of the, the, the daylight would be on one side of the earth and the other would, would basically not get enough and, and a lot of vegetation and stuff would die. I mean, I, I know it's, I know I'm, I have probably not making any sense at all about that theory, but if you change all those thousands and hundreds of thousands of dials of, of mercury and zinc and, and magnesium and all this stuff, if you change one dial, all of the rest of them have to change to compensate for that one initial change. So when they change things in the game, it has to last a season so that they can gather the information to know if it is or isn't working. Because if you think about it, every time they do an update, something changes and somebody's game freezes all the time or you get quirks and things that you can't that you have to keep submitting requests for. Whenever you change something, one thing, everything else has to shift to find balance. So whatever you're going through right now in life and in the game, what do you want your character to be like? Do you wanna show up, keep fighting, show people what your real character is in that realm? that no matter what the storm is that you're going through, you're going to keep fighting. You're going to keep your hands up. You're not gonna drop down your guard. Or are you not gonna show up? You're gonna stop fighting. Is that the real character that you have? If you've ever been in a fist fight before, and you have a big swarm of freaking people all around you screaming, hit him, hit him, hit him, fight, fight, fight. And the adrenaline is flowing through your body. And you're throwing those haymakers trying to knock the dude out. For what? You're fighting yourself. <laughs> They're not who you're fighting. 
You're fighting you. When I fight, I fight myself. Remember when Neo fought uh, uh, the gatekeeper for, um, not Morpheus, but the, when Neo fought the, the guy that had the, the garments, he looked like Bruce Lee, but he was like uh, really, really good, like Jet Li, the fighting. And then at the end of the fight, Neo says to him, why did you, uh, if I'm allowed to pass now, why did, why did we have to fight? He says, you don't know who it is that you are in front of until you fight him or something like that. You never know a man until you fight him, but you also don't know yourself until you fight. So whatever it is that you're fighting right now, just know that. Whatever it is that you're going through right now, just know that. Keep your hands up, y'all. Peace.